And Henry, tell everyone how you got involved in this. Well, um, my mom had a stroke in uh, 1989 and had upper limb spasticity. And upper limb spasticity happens about four months after a stroke. The, um, I, if I believe I'm correct, the secondary muscles take over. And you've seen this somebody, you, you know somebody where the upper arm is frozen into place and they lit, now the, 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 the fingers are growing into the palm. It is really painful. It is unsightly for them. It is uh, demoralizing. And there's not much you can do. All of a sudden, uh, they have this new tool in the toolbox for doctors mm -hmm. uh, and they inject Botox which releases the muscles and allows the arm. You don't necessarily get back the, uh, the use of the arm, but it, you allow the arm to go back where it belongs. And did it help for your mom? It, my mom did not have this um, uh, opportunity, did not have this potential. And you watch people who go through therapy who did not have it, and, and with her upper limb spasticity, and you see life drip out her toes. The will to live just, she didn't even want to be pushed outside anymore in her wheelchair. When they asked me to go around the country and talk about this potential, I jumped at the chance. I saw the result of these injections with Botox. And I believe I'm right, doctor, a Botox was first neurological before it ever became uh, cosmetic. Mm -hmm. And, and right. we actually do have Dr. Jack Shim here. He's a <coughs> clinical professor in the neuroscience department at the University of California, San Diego. He's here because he's going to shed more light on this topic. And Dr. Shim, thank you so much for joining us because we all think of Botox as eliminating wrinkles, but it's, it's now being used to eliminate spasticity or improve spasticity. Absolutely. The very first use was for treating children with a lazy eye. And it's over time been used for literally hundreds of things, although there are now seven approved indications beyond what we think of as wrinkle smoothing. And, and talk with us a little bit about how this process works. The medication works when it's injected by blocking the release of chemicals that are connecting the nerve to muscle. And normally there is a release of acetylcholine. In pain fibers there are other neurotransmitters that are released. And Botox kind of comes in sort of like a scissors or a pinking shears and prevents that actual release of the chemicals so that the muscle can't contract as hard, so it's not as tight. So you're figuring out exactly where you need to inject the Botox to have its best effect? Exactly. When we treat people for upper limb spasticity, typically we'll attach a couple of electrodes on the surface, little stickers, clip the wires on there, put an electrode that is an injection needle attached to the syringe, and with that we can really be certain that we're in the correct muscle, in the biceps, and the muscles that flex the fingers or bend the wrist into a painful, awkward position. And you're seeing, like Henry's seen, some great results, I'm assuming. It's absolutely life-changing in spasticity patients for them to be able to go from unable to care for themselves or unable to get their arm through a sweater, or I have a patient who couldn't make the bed because her arm was so stiff. Treated, she can make the bed and she can take care of her household. Thank you so much for being with us today. Oh, absolutely, my pleasure. <laughs>